Well, on today's episode, we're going to put Yama Lube in the Yama Ha. drive and on the Yama ha we are gonna do an oil change. Yep, first thing to do, make sure your Yama ha is warm. It's a, it's about it's about men in black warm. If you don't know that reference watch it. So it's good to take your skins off there so that's certainly hot enough. Perfect. We're gonna have to take off some of this. Always forget the what ah! Always ah! Forget the ah! Ones at the bottom. Ah! These are bronze bearings or something. Everyone asks after them. What bearings are those? I say everyone, about seven people have ever asked. Power bronze or something, I think they're called. Whatever. Anyway. Fairing off. That was fairing nicely. Oh, hang on. I forgot I'd always. Is there always a top bolt or something? Somewhere. I'll sort that out now. And as if by magic. Fairing off. I have no idea where to put that. Let's just. I'll put it there. Let's just put it there. Right. Now, back to the normal look of a phaser. So, this is kind of normally how they look, really. Naked! You can see what difference the fairing makes. Mmm, nice. This is what we're interested in, people. Down here. This and that. That and this. Drain oil. Oil filter. From the Yamaha. Hey, what do the Americans call bleep bloop down the bottom? This is a phaser. Or an FZ6. Is it an FZ6? Bleep bloop. Oil change. Let's do that now about 3,000 miles since I did the change and apparently as so the forums say basically when the sort of first to second gear changes get a bit sloppy and you sometimes get a neutral between fourth and fifth that's telling you it wants an oil change. I've also had a couple of moments where I don't like some of the noises and I went by the forums and did a few things <laughs> mm, that thread looks terrible and um, with the oil last time um, I don't like it and now I've just gone for genuine Yamalube. So this is Yamalube, Yamaha's own oil, recommended by them for this bike, fully synthetic. And it was about six quid for this four litres more than the shell stuff that I used before. I've also gone for a genuine filter. It is that number. Oh yeah, that number. Whatever that number is. Uh, 13 quid. So it's about 50 quid in all for these two. Let's get draining. So you really should always make sure that your drainage container is clean. That's good enough. Um, the reason being is that you want to sort of see what sparkles, just so you know how close you are to an engine rebuild. Now this is a problem. So, as you may be able to see, sort of stuff's in the way, like the stand. So you could put it on the side stand, it's not a bad idea, that'll help it drain. Um, so maybe we could do that, but then maybe it will capture in here. We don't want that to happen. Uh, the rubble's on, it will, no, no, it's going to, yeah, it's out. It's going to get on the exhaust. So what do we do? Bit of card, basically. I'm going to use a little bit of a, you know, one of those adverts that showed you a little bendy thing that comes in here, but I could just use a piece of cardboard. So that's my little setup. It's got a nice little slide to go down. What fun. What fun! Mm. Yumminess. Mmm, yummy! Um, oil filter next. Remove oil filter. Oil filters aren't easy to get off on these, I find. You probably need one of those little fork things that goes in. I find a little chain device right on the end of the filter does the trick. Probably shouldn't be this tight, but it is, so, yeah. And then the chain just gets stuck on the chain guide, so that's fine. I think we should be able to do the rest by hand. Should be able to do the rest by hand. We should be able to do the rest by hand. 
We can't do the rest by hand. Ah, nothing like a neutral switch getting in the way. Come on, Benny. If only that, if only the switch wasn't in the way and the bike. And, and yeah, the, if the bike wasn't in the way, we wouldn't be having this problem. Maybe we should just remove the engine. I'm making this. Basically, I'm making this job out to be a lot more difficult than it actually is. It moved. It moved. I saw it move. Perfect. Fire, ah. you're so tight. Your Japanese people make things just too tight, you know? Just way too tight. Too tight. Way too tight. I'm such a faff. Stop the faffing. Change the oil, he says. Just going out, darling. Change the oil. Three hours later. I just, just not got, quite got the oil filter off yet. What you need to get yourself is one of those little claws that goes in. Although I think that would foul there. The strap one must be the best, I reckon. I can't find my strap. Is a bit annoying. Actually, it's very, very annoying. It, it really should not be this difficult. How to make an oil change complicated. Use our little slide again. There we go. I like to let the oil drain down first before you completely remove the oil filter. There we go. Yummy. That looks pretty bad actually after 3,000 miles. I have to admit, it's really the point I've recorded me doing a very bad job of an oil change while I'm sat in my own oil, is why would you use genuine parts when you could save yourself about four pounds on an oil filter and get a non-genuine oil filter, and you could save yourself about six quid and not get the genuine engine oil. You might wonder. Well, just trust the manufacturer is what I'm gonna say, basically. That's my technical information. I haven't read what exact ingredients are in this compared to others and what additives and you're probably going to find they won't tell you. But Yamaha know exactly what their engine needs, and they tell you. This is what you need. And to be fair to them, they don't charge you like a hundred pounds or 25 quid a litre. Uh, it's quartz in America, I think, for a few quarts. It was 36 pound delivered for that. 36 quid delivered. I didn't even have to walk out my front door. And 13 quid delivered for the oil filter. And I got peace of mind. So here's my take. Peace of mind, use genuine oil for your genuine Yamaha. Of course, if you're running a fake Yamaha, you might as well use fake Yamalube too, I suppose. Faker lube and faker ha. I don't know. I don't know what I'm roughing on about. But we're gonna let that drip, drain for a little bit longer, have a cup of tea, put it back up again. Yeah. Maybe you should there's oil everywhere, so we'll clear that up. My last little trick for getting the last bit of oil out on these, you probably know a safer way. Let's be honest, this isn't going to be the safest way. So I advise you not to do this, even though I'm going to do it. On the centre stand, left hand on the left park bar, right hand on the rear like passenger handle. Put your foot just there on the centre stand and lean it towards you, just a twitch. Keep it on the centre stand, keep pressure back. And if you let go at this point, it will just fall back on the centre stand. So, technically I'm not doing anything dangerous. My left foot is about three foot behind my right foot. So I can put this bike wherever I want it. And it gets that last little bit of oil out. That's sat there in the bottom of the sump. Well, that's the idea anyway, but as you can see, it basically finished dripping. And we've got another quarter litre, maybe. So that's nice.
Right, that'll do. I'm bored. Okay. We're break clean, clean that off. And we're done. And then we'll put our genuine Yamalu. Mmm, fresh oil. Oh, it's just something about fresh oil. I don't know what it is, like my favourite thing to do. Oh, other than ride the bike, obviously. It's like, yeah, I can do an oil change. It's so exciting. Okay. Okay. Now, some people say, no, don't put oil on the thingy for the thingy. Oh, nice new crush washer. That's also a nice thing. Don't often get that with uh, it's on the sump plug. Look at that. You can see that? You might think that sump plug washer will stay with the sump plug, but it doesn't. And the last oil filter I got, it didn't come with a fresh one. Genuine comes with a fresh, genuine sun plug washer. Very nice. Sweet. So we'll get that sorted in a minute. Ah, oh, and look at that. Now I've never noticed, I've never ever seen a filter in my life. I've been a mechanic for 20 years nearly now. Oh, it's 18, 17, 18 years. Can you see that? There's grease. It's pre-greased for you. That is awesome. That is very, very cool. So, we are going to just put a dribble of oil inside the oil filter to just help the priming of it. I never fill them to the brim. I know other people do, but I don't. To be honest, I very rarely put any in it at all, but just if you completely dried out your sump like you have now, just put a dribble in. Just a dribble of oil. Because basically what's going to happen now because it's not a vertical release, it's a horizontal. I'm just going to try and get that into the filter element a little bit, so it's not a bone dry element. And then we'll try and flip that on as fast as we can, so we don't lose our new oil down the pan. There we go. Only needs to be finger tight. Stop over tightening your oil filters. So, finger tight. You'll soon know if it's leaking, let's be honest. Because there'll be oil all over your back wheel. And then you'll die. And while you're sliding along the road, you're thinking, what happened there? You'll remember that you left this loose. No, no, finger tight's fine. Perfectly fine. And then, our little, our little thingy, our little crush washer. There we go, that's disposed of. Mmm, packaging. There is a number on here, by the way, I've just ruined. So you can see it for yourself if you want to order it separately. I believe the order number is 214-1118, sorry, 9801. There we go, for the camera not to focus on. That's fine. And there we go. And I always like to put the seam of the crush washer against the bolt. Don't know why. Just seems to make sense really, so there's a smooth edge against the face of the block. You do not want to over tighten this. I repeat, do not want to over tighten that. Let's get a torque wrench. Oh, have a little look. We have a look at oil sump bolt. Tells us it should be 12 of the Newton meters. So 12 of the Newton meters is what we shall give it. Let me tell you folks, Almost nothing. You must obey the laws of Newton meters. Now, the issue you're going to find, like I'm about to show you, let's just take away this delicious soup, is your torque wrench might not get in there. This just does. You don't want to put extensions on it, because if you put an extension on it, actually, you adjust how much torque you're applying to the nut. 12 newton meters, here we go. Oh, nearly there. Did you hear that? I think that was it. Oh, it's just there. 
clunk, don't overdo it. Again, strip those threads, riding along, oil, death, death, death. Now, what can we do about the old oil, other than disposing of it responsibly, of course? Well, you can check its viscosity. No, there's not much of it left, I have to admit, 3,000 miles. It feels very thin, and it's not very warm anymore. It does have a tiny bit of brake clean in it, which won't help. But I can tell you before I had the brake clean in it, I did feel it in it. It wasn't in great condition, and I would say it's at about 20 degrees now. No more than that. So I definitely think it was time to change. And we can also put a nice clean magnet. And check for pieces. You're going to get some, which is often what the bronze effect sort of swirl you can see. It's the tiny, tiny microscopic bits of metal, which is general engine wear and tear. But you're looking for big chunks. And there is one piece there. Now I had already flicked him out and had a good look. I don't like that, I have to admit. But, if I'm honest, it could have come from some muck that was around, um, that had been picked up and flicked up in there, around the oil filter area. Uh, so, maybe don't make that mistake. Drain the oil from the plug, put your magnet in, then undo the oil filter. But, mm, not ideal. We'll, we'll log that in my memory. Nope, I'll totally ignore it. Perfect. In all seriousness, I mean, a tiny couple of bits of metal, not the end of the world. I mean, there wasn't just huge chunks of bearings in there. You're going to get bits here and there. Um, this is its first oil change since I did the last oil change. And I don't think it had been looked after great before then, so we might have just got some bits out from previous. Um, if you've got like a whole like Christmas tree of metal on the end of your magnet, it's bad. Yeah, that's pretty bad. You can get magnetised ones of these. There's many pluses and minuses to that. Big arguments about that now. Whether that's a good idea or not to hold all your all the metal bits on the end of that. Do what you like. Do the research. Come to your own conclusion. But I am suggesting this. Not sponsored. Just use the genuine oil. Don't use cheap oil. Don't do it. So, back to our lovely manual. Let's go for the zoom in. Slow zoom. So we're going to be looking at about this is saying 2.8 litres. Yeah, 2.8 litres for oil and filter change, 3.4 if it's completely dry. So somewhere between 2.8 and 3 because we got it pretty empty. But we'll put two and a half in, dip it, check it, and crank the engine and have a little look. And once again, Lesson from this video, use genuine oil, it's really not that expensive. And let's let's be honest, I need a funnel. Here's the other lesson to learn from this, how not to fill up your Yamaha. Uh, if you're using a bike like this, you know, you, you're not using your little 125 beta uh, for winter. You know, it's a, it's a nice bike, look after it, 600 cc's, it revs to 14,000 RPM, why wouldn't you put the real oil in? He asks himself, because 12 months ago he put cheap shell oil in because the forum said it was as good if not better. We'll see. Over the next 3,000 miles, we'll see. Maybe I won't release this video until I've done another few thousand miles and I'll report back to see what difference this oil made. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, and maybe I won't. Not sure yet. I'll make that decision later. Ah! Yeah, definitely funnel. The first time I did this, I definitely used a funnel, and it was definitely the right option. Yeah, that's fine, just, yeah. Right, that is 2.8 litres, exactly like 
hermetically sealed measurements, 2.8 litres. So, do the right thing, not start the engine, which you probably should do. Let's just see what we've got on the stick of dips. We stuck a dip in, we screwed it in, we unscrewed the dip, and the stick says, plenty of oil. Yep. Plenty. Okay, no reason why we can't give this a little... <laughs> Make sure oil light goes off. Always good to be neutral. Oil light is off. Sounds a bit quieter actually, unless that's just placebo. So then we'll give it for 30 seconds. One, two, three, thirty. It's like Max is here, there's oil everywhere. And thus begins the problem with fresh oil where you can't actually see the level on the blooming dipstick. Oh, give me a stick that's a dippy. Right. Come on now, show me the level. Show me the level! No, that reference. Blue blues. Ah! Okay. Yep. There's def. I mean, it's. I can see it all on the dipstick, so there must be oil in there. That's good to go. Fair and back on, and let's. Ride it and slide it into the ditch. So, if anything, if I haven't said this enough times, why do I use genuine oil and a genuine filter? It's quite simple. Yamaha know what they're doing. It's got Yamalube oil, filter, and coolant in it now, and I only put the best fuel that I can afford for my bike at that time too. Now look out for that test. We are doing a back-to-back -back storage test of SO99, which has no ethanol in this area, E5, E10, and diesel, because put diesel in bikes? Is there a diesel bike? I think there was, wasn't there once? That must have been noisy. Um, we don't like noisy bikes here. So that's my take on doing the oil change. It just feels better. There's always a good placebo effect when you put the right oil in your motorbike. Because when you're riding along, you don't want to have to be like worrying about such things, really, do you? So let's see if that cures my first or second hiccups, gear changes, and uh, gets rid of that tick that I've been a little bit annoyed about and worried. Let's pretend it does. Fixed! So thanks for watching One More Drive. Stick around for more average content about average subjects, about average bikes. So for the Yama, ha. We're going to put Lama, Lama Lube, Lama Lube, totally.